Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. And what you see right now is not an IC7100. You're looking at the spectrum scope on one of my other radios. And the IC7100 doesn't quite have that kind of spectrum scope display. Because when it came out, there were very few radios that had any sort of spectrum scope at all. There was a couple, but not wasn't very common. The IC7100 does have a spectrum scope, though. It's a little clunkier than some of the original ones, but it does work. So let's take a look at how that works. So here's the 7100 set up in my truck. And we'll get you a little bit of audio here. And the spectrum scope is on menu number three, which I was already on, but so if you go through the menus here with the menu button, menu three, the second soft key in says scope. So if we touch scope, you get this little line across the bottom of the display, which is not very well explained. It is explained some in the manual. Let's look at the features here. So you've, you've really got three keys that work on this page. You've got a play and stop button, you have a recall button, and you have a step button. So the step button determines how big the steps are that the scope takes when it's actually looking for signals. And the range there, let's go all the way through this, it starts out at 0.5K or 500 Hertz and it goes up in increments and you notice each time I'm pre pressing this it's taking a scan and it goes up to 25K maximum. You'd probably use the 25K on 2 meters, maybe on 440, although honestly it's really not big enough for 440 to be useful. So I am going to put it down on the 2K, and you see each time I press that, you get some different lines on here. The spectrum scope on the 7100 is not continuous. You hear we've got audio there, and every time I press the play button here, it's going to take a scan, and you see it sweep across. And if you look, hopefully I've got the screen set up so that you'll be able to see this okay. Right in the center, above the recall button, there's a little tiny arrow below the line that points up. That's the center of the sweep, and that is centered on whatever frequency you're on at the moment. So I'm on 14260 on 20 meters, and when I press this, it does a sweep, and you see some lines show up here. The sweep consists of 60 dots or 60 pixels going across here. So the vertical line is how strong the signal is, just like on any of the modern scopes. And each pixel going across horizontally represents whatever this step size is. So in my case, it's 2K, 2 kilohertz right now. So I've got a total of 60 dots, so that's basically 30 below and 30 above. So if it's 2 kilohertz per step, this is going to sweep 60 kilohertz below to 60 kilohertz above. So that's enough to cover the entire 20 meter sideband portion because I'm on 260, so that's going to go from 14200. There's a little bit further down below in the extra class section, and it goes up to 14320 and again goes up a little further to 350 but covers most of the band. So every time I press this you'll notice that this changes and that's because it's doing a sweep across so at each frequency you're seeing a snapshot of whatever the signals are at the instant it checks those signals. Now 2 kilohertz means you might miss some things in between Although a sideband signal is, you know, 3 kilohertz wide or up to 3 kilohertz wide. So you'll probably get most of the signals here. You're not going to miss them. But again, it's an instant in time. And you can see how dramatically different this display is on each of these sweeps. Because if somebody's 
mid-syllable while they're talking, you're going to see no signal strength. And then if they're actually in the middle, you know, if they're saying a word, you'll see something. And of course, if somebody's calling CQ, you know, by the time you go tuned to it, you may miss it. So how do you use this scope? If you, let's see if we can find a sweep here with a good strong couple of signals. So here's a few. So the, I mentioned that arrow is in the center. Once I do a sweep, if I start tuning, you'll see that arrow moving. And here, where I'm on that kind of stronger vertical bar, that's that signal. So he's still talking. Let's keep going to the right. And so now I'm over this sort of block of signals. And that's at 14, 294, 90. So this doesn't, there's no frequency indication on this line, but you can tell where you are from that arrow. That's how you can find signals, essentially just move the arrow back and forth until you're on one of the spots and you've got a signal. Now, just for grins, we'll change the step size here to one kilohertz. So this is only going to be 30 kilohertz down and up. So that's going to take us from basically 230 to 290. And we'll do a couple of sweeps here. So there's some signals. Let me get so I can hear, and I'll give you some audio as well. So there's a... So there's that signal. And then just to show you the edges, we'll go all the way down. When that arrow gets to the very left edge, we should be at 230, or just about 230. Oh, and we got some slow scan. So there's the arrow right on that left mark, and we're at 230. And you can tune beyond this, I'll show you what happens there. And then up at the top mark, we're at 290, so it's 30 kilohertz either way. If you keep tuning, the arrow just changes to a little blinking right arrow to let you know that you're off that side of this particular scan. For sideband, probably one or two kilohertz steps is about the most you'd want to go. If you start going five kilohertz per step, uh, you're probably going to start missing things, and that would actually put you real wide. So let's go all the way down to the bottom here. Let's see, 5 times 30 should be um, 150 kilohertz down, yeah. So the bottom now is basically 120. So we're off the bottom of the 20 meter, at least, uh, side bend. So that goes down to 150. And if I started at 160, oh, did I actually start at 160? That might be part of my problem. Let me go back and make sure I... I think I started at 160. I don't remember. So there's 260. We'll do a scan. But... So there's a signal there, which maybe it missed, maybe it didn't. Got a signal there. And now we're basically off the top of the band. So for most of the HF bands, probably one or two kilohertz is good for you, at least to get an idea of what's going on. Oh, so let me go. So I'm set back to two kilohertz now. And I need to go back to, uh, and I just touched that and changed it to five. I need to go back to where I want to start from. You can start from 250, 260. Somewhere in there will get you most of the sideband portion. So there's one way up at the top. That's going to be pretty close to 320. Yeah, we may have missed him. Oh, no. I keep missing them. 
Anyway, I think you get the idea. The half kilohertz step, and we'll go tune down into the CW portion, just for grins. Or CW and data. Let's just go down to 1440. And if I set my step size to a half kilohertz per step, that should get me most of the signals in there. And again, you see this changes each time I press the button. And that's because if somebody's like, you know, in the gap between a dot and a dash or a letter, they're going to disappear. So let's see. So that's him. There's one there. I missed, may have missed the one there. There's. Hey folks, Future Tom here. Toward the beginning of that video, I mentioned the recall button, or soft key, that's in the middle of the screen at the bottom, and then I never talked about it. That recall button, what that does, if you do a sweep and then you start turning the tuning dial to tune up or down and move that arrow up around to try to find signals, if you're off the center frequency, if you press and hold the recall soft key, it will tune the radio back to the center frequency where you started the sweep. That's all it does. Just wanted to make sure you knew. So there's some stuff up there. So you get the idea. It's not nearly as sophisticated as the scopes of today. And it's certainly um, nowhere near as pretty as the scopes of today. But if you're trying to find a signal, the band scope on here is at least useful for that. You can scan the band and at least get an idea if something's going on or not. And at least help you find some signals along the way. So that's the band scope on the IC7100. A little bit manual, a little bit clunky, but it does work. And honestly, I've really wished for a mobile that has, like, you know, the pretty eye candy band scopes, but I'm not sure that's a great idea in a mobile. While you're driving, you probably don't want to be staring at that pretty screen with all the cool stuff on it. Anyway. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.